G'day folks. Oh, welcome to another warm summer's day. Uh, the old Holden's looking a bit sad unfortunately. <laughs> That's why I'm just going to get some little bits out of it and maybe an engine to premiere. Tipping a pin out behind me. It's at the scrapyard obviously, judging by the sound you'll hear in the background. Um, what's it done? Almost a million Ks on the clock. It's doing pretty well. Automatic. Um, most of it's there apart from well bodywork. The whole front end assembly's gone. Like the whole sheet metal and everything bolt unbolts in certain places and the whole lot lifts straight off so you can pull the engine out pretty easy. They're quite neat in that respect. I'm pretty sure this is either a 253 or a 308. Don't know for sure, but we'll find out. I don't know when it was uncovered, but it's had a tiny bit of rain on it down the carby, but I can still turn it over by hand. If we get a bit of tension on that belt, I can turn it by hand via the, um, the fan. I've done two full revolutions and it feels all right. So I'm gonna work on getting this unbolted. But mount bolt, cut fuel hoses, um, get down the back there and undo the bell housing. Yeah, they're not too hard. Only need a 916 spanner and a half inch, I think. Look at that, I've got two computer wheel balances and no mandrels for them. It's supposed to have a spindle head and mandrel set with them, but they're all gone. Bugger it. Okay, well, didn't have much more video to do at the yard. Got the engine completely unbolted and, uh, yeah, ready to go on a pallet. That's going to be the next step. So. Yeah, I'll pick that up probably next Saturday, or this coming Saturday, I should say. I also went to a um, mechanics shop, and not just a friend's for business, and picked up some scrap. I originally went there to inquire about, see if he had a starter for this, but he said, no, nah, the cheapest he could do one was $50, and that's what I'm paying for that Holden engine, so I'd say it's one or the other. This engine come to pieces. I did make some dollars off the scrap that he gave me, alternators, dead starter motors, that sort of stuff, nothing worth messing around with. A couple of car rims, uh, I got that one to strip down, or actually I'll try and sell it. I know someone who's got a Mazda Tribute that might want a matching spare, I don't know. I'm pretty sure they don't come with matching spares, but that one's still serviceable, it's just the tyres screwed. So I'll either strip that down and scrap it, or sell it, give it away, whatever. But this thing's next, once I'm done cleaning up. Gonna keep cleaning along here. I've organised under there, throwing out a lot of junk and stuff. It's been down there for like three years. In here, not too bad. Um, Westinghouse DC generator. I almost dragged it out last night just to do something on it, but I still want to get through all this. That can go outside. Bits of V4 is coming to pieces. I can't be bothered with that. I have no time for it. Uh, the MIG welder can be stored away somewhere. That chainsaw carburet is a mess. It needs a new bar and chain and everything, so that can go in the bin. Um, the Yanmar I want to sell off. I don't want to ship it around, though. I'd rather just sell it to someone near Melbourne who's got a trailer and can come and pick it up. Uh, if it's a 6x4 and fits under this gantry crane, we can just roll the trailer straight in here and lower it onto a trailer. Um, talk, talk privately about prices and things. If you're a really good friend of mine, and um, I know you pretty well, I'll be able to do a good deal. Anyone else, well, you know how the deals go. <laughs> we've got mates rates and we've got regular commercial rates. So yeah, I'm going to get into here. I'm going to set up that bin rack because I need something for all my automotive parts and large bolts and things. Sort them out into categories, 16mm, 10mm, 12mm bolts. Yeah, that'll be good. That'll be very handy to have it out and set up. An electrical cabinet from work. I was going to use that as a generator control box, but I don't think I will now. I can throw that out again. Same with all rubbish and stuff. Anywho, enough rambling. Uh, I'm going to go clean up outside a bit and get back into this. Thanks for watching. Now, I never really paid much attention to this at first, but what I thought was just a, say, a cosmetic oxide line from something sitting in here out in the weather. Um, I think something really bad's happened to this wheel. 
there's deep gouges there and definitely there probably fractures or at least a bend and it looks like even something like a nut or something has rolled around inside here caught between the brake rotor or the caliper because it goes all the way around along with this graze mark so something something horrible has happened there this thing's definitely not serviceable didn't know about that I've just given it a bit of a clean up to um, see if there are any cracks in it and yeah <laughs> That's a bit more extreme than I thought. It'd be interesting to peel this tire off one day and see what's in what it looks like inside. It's probably all crazed and cracked on the powder coating. I don't think it's actually fractured the rim, but yeah, and the tire is flat, but that's probably because of the two nails that are in it. And oddly enough, um, where is it? There's one there, and there's one directly opposite it. That's kind of unusual. I mean. To speculate, I'd say somebody cracked the shits with them and A, you tried to puncture their tyres and succeeded and probably even dropped something through one of the spokes and got it caught between the brake rotor. It's almost a vandalism case. But then there could have been a loose nut off the um, caliper, but I think you'd hear about that. This is an OEM wheel and tyre from a Mazda Tribute and if, wheel, if brake calipers were falling apart, you'd think you'd hear about it. Oh, who knows. Something bad happened, that one can go in the scrap bin. Hell, I might even uh, find a way to evacuate all of the air from the tyre and do a hydrostatic test on it and see what it takes to pop it. I haven't done anything like that for a while. I think the first and only hydrostatic pop we did was with the um, washing machine drum and the inner tube in a washing machine drum. That was sort of fun. Um, yeah. Puzzling. Oh well, I'm not going to make any more than scrap value from that one and the tyre is going to cost me $1.50 to get rid of, so oh, I should be able to buy a couple of beers or something. Anyway, thanks for watching.